All right, welcome back. I'm going to bring my energy level up a little bit, or maybe not. <laughs> it's kind of nice to be chill. Like so much of my life, I've been like hard hitting, fast driving. Like I watched that Fast and Furious movie, and I'm like, man, those guys, totally low key. <laughs> but uh, it's nice to chill out a little. Hey, turn your monitors, you know, the right direction because you're back in class. And then once you've done that, you should stay away from all that. All right, so we're back. Yeah, you got your monitors turned sideways, and we are in week six. And, uh, you know, right here at the beginning of this, you now have until 10-1 to register for my IT lab. So if you have not yet registered for my IT lab, you need to do it by October 1st, after which point I can't help you. They said, all right, we'll extend it till 10-1. So that's it. So if you don't get paid, signed up for my IT lab by then, you flunk the course. That's it, because we're 50% of your grade. So you have till 10-1. So it should be working. If it doesn't work, let me know, and I will help you get it working. Uh, there's tutors available to help you for free, just in case you haven't seen that. We are in week six, which means that under uh, lectures, go there first, right? If you're watching this online, you're already watching it online, but in the lectures, right, I record the class and then put that at the first of this week. So uh, that's the one you should be watching first and foremost if you're in my online class. And, um, but since you're watching this, you're already watching that. And so we're in week six, which means you have to be through all one, two, three, four, five. And then we are moving into six. And uh, I just need to make a, a mention here that your grade right there, this one right there, the videos are sometimes just a little bit out of date. So here's this watch this video first and then this file to help you. Like both of those are out of date. The video is out of date and that file is out of date because I've changed the grading categories a little bit since I made that video and since I made that file. So use your brain and just sort of like interpolate like, oh, that's the way it was. This is what he's wanting me to do. We have new categories. I could take out these which are no longer offered and add in those which are now offered and now I've got the right category. So just think it through. Right, but some of this stuff is just sometimes just a little dated. And if anything is ever way too dated, like Todd, this is like way too dated. Like I used to have an assignment up here that was like to use Google. I can't even remember Google Google uh, Google Helpouts. They used to have a thing called Google Helpouts, and then they canceled it. So I was like, that no longer exists. I got to take that assignment down. So if you ever come across anything that's like way too dated or doesn't exist anymore, like hey Todd. Microsoft Word doesn't exist anymore, <laughs> or whatever it is. I'll take the assignment down, just let me know. So week six, we're doing uh, your website portfolio, Google Sites. And, you know, I just want to see you, you know, get into Google Sites and play around with it a little bit. It doesn't have to be amazing. And then, uh, you know, our normal programming, and then a paper covering weeks four through six. Anybody have any questions about these papers? Right? It's just one page, and it's just tell me what's going on in your life in relation to this class. Right? Like, what have you learned? So it's really a chance for you to reinforce the things that are standing out to you, just to reflect a little bit, what have I picked up? And, uh, and then just say that back to me casually, no big deal. Right? So that, that's, uh, that's week six on uh, the Blackboard side, it's just your assignments. And then over on the My T Lab side, I'm going to pause this video, it's going to take me a second to get... So we are uh, in week six, which means we're done with the Windows assessment, you're done with all the Word assessment, because there's one here, there's four here, so that's five, so we got through all that stuff in week five, we are now going into Excel, so inside Excel you have your assessments, you've got four of them, you just need to do the first one this week, and then under exams you uh, should be through uh, chapter sixes, quizzes, right, go all the way through chapter six, and you should do the, the word lab test. Since we're done with all the word stuff, you should do the word labs lab test. So that's what you got lined up for this week. Okay? That's, that's your work. Is all good? It's good. Um, so this week in the textbook, uh, the textbook's talking about hardware, CPU, RAM, you know, whatever, chapter six in the textbook, CPU, RAM, and, uh, and you know, internals of your computer hardware. We've already covered that pretty well. Do you all feel like you, you want to do a little bit of review just to sort of drive it in? You want to draw that little diagram we put up there with the different components, right? So right now we're talking about Chapter 6 in the, the textbook. And, uh, and how many people, you know, um, how many people feel like, tell me about the CPU. What's the CPU? Central Processing Unit, right? 
And we had that diagram up there. And what are some of the components inside the CPU? What is it? So that is, the hard drive is not inside the CPU. Uh, but the CPU does have some memory. It stores some things. It remembers things in the CPU. And what was, uh, what, what's the memory inside the CPU called? Cache. Yeah, so we have cache inside the CPU. And we also have registers inside the CPU. So that's some, some places where, um, you know, uh, I'm going to get some crazy looking stuff typing that in. Here we go. Right, central processing unit. We have a, here memory unit. Maybe that's the registers. We have cache, right? And the control unit and the arithmetic uh, logic unit. And ROM and RAM actually aren't in the CPU, so to hell with that diagram. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, crazy diagrams. Um, yeah, so the CPU, right? One of the things that's interesting about the CPU is you guys hear, like, when we shop for a new computer, I don't know, uh, Costco, I like looking at Costco's computers. Um, this is actually a good little exercise. Computers and printers. And let's say I need a new computer. I often will just, well, I'm a Macophile now. I've been converted. I actually had a student in, like, 2008. I was about to buy a new computer at Dell. He's like, Todd, what are you doing? you got to get a Mac. I was like, okay, and ever since then, you know what they say, right? Once you go Mac, you never go back. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, so here I want to look for uh, a new computer, and so I can say, all right, I want a desktop tower, a desktop bundle, or a laptop or something. And so I come in here, and I'm just getting the tower. I'm not getting monitors. And I could just look at, like, wow, those are some crazy-looking computers. I could look at, like, uh, this, this one right here. And let's see what it what it has. Alienware does look like it's from outer space, but it's an Alienware Area 51 desktop, Intel Core i7, dual four gigabyte graphic, Blu-ray, 1500 watt power supply, um, and then specifications. Let's see what the specifications are. Intel or Core i7. They used to do like megahertz and gigahertz. I'm not seeing that anymore. Uh. You guys know what I'm talking about? Megahertz, gigahertz? <clears throat> processor speed. Yeah, processor speed. So it's just all, what, i7 now? They don't show us processor speed anymore? So here are 3.6 gigahertz, right? So when we look at a, you know, here's our processor and memory. So uh, when we look at a computer, one of the things that's really important to us is like, you know, hey, what's the processor? So that's the central processing unit. Right? And there's different processors that, that are out there. Intel is one of the big manufacturers. But then if like you know, we look at that main page, maybe down here at the lower price ones, here's like an Intel i5, Intel Core i3, so those are all Intel. Uh, Intel, Intel, um, Intel i7, right? So higher up in numbers, better i5. Um, seems like the only thing Costco's uh, or these are all Intel. Only thing that they're offering are Intel. Anybody know like where you get a computer that's not Intel? At the Mac store. The Mac store. <laughs> they even have Intel now. Intel inside. Mac Intel inside. Right. Our last two or three HPs all have the AMD processors. In. Yeah. So HP maybe. Let's look at. Uh, so where where could we go? Like Best Buy. Best Buy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's look to see what a different. Beep, 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 beep. Crap, crap, crap. Computers, desktops. Uh, everyday desktops. <clears throat> All right. AMD A8, right? So here's another one, right? It has an AMD in it. Uh, I don't know what that stands for, AMD, but um, they're different manufacturer. So you can look up the specs on you know, a CPU and figure out, hey, what's the difference? But generally speaking, the more you pay, the more you get. It's just like, you know. And, uh, and this, this thing right here, 3.6 gigahertz, that's a clock speed. That's how fast the CPU operates. It's your clock speed. 
And so the faster, the higher that number, the better. And so we learned about, uh, it used to be megahertz. We used to measure clock speed in megahertz, but now it's gigahertz. And so that's how many things it does like every second. Hertz is like cycles per second. That's what a hertz is. And, uh, you know, gigahertz is like, what's gigahertz? What is giga? Not gigabit. One billion? Giga is one billion, I bet. I forget the guy's name, but Morgan's Law, was it? Uh, denoting a factor of 10 to the ninth, right? So the 10 to the ninth is nine zeros, which would be not million, but billion. And, and then we have mega. And mega is a uh, very large, huge uh, megabyte. Megabyte is uh, 2 to the 20 byte meg megahertz. 1 million. So mega is million. Mega is million. Six zeros, right? And uh, giga is billion, nine zeros. And so when we have 3.6 gigahertz, it's doing 3.6 billion things per second. Whoa. 3.6 billion cycles per second. So it's processing 3.6 billion times a second. That's amazing, right? But anyhow, that's the clock speed. And, that, and, and the clock speed is... It synchronizes transactions in your computer. So everything sort of has to happen at the same rhythm, right? It's like an orchestra. Everybody's got to be keeping the beat. If somebody's not keeping the beat, you get dissonance. It's not going to, the music wouldn't sound right to, you know, continue the analogy. What were you saying? <clears throat> that law that says uh, it, it doubles every 18 months. I forget the Moore's law. Moore's yeah. law. That's what it applies to is that. So in 18 months, that'll be outdated. It'll be doubled. Yeah, I'm not sure. Is Moore's Law still holding? Moore's Law holding, right? It said that it, it was. Um, how, it yeah, I think we looked that yeah. up, right? Yeah. So, yeah, it'll just processing speed will double. Which, we did look that when up. When was huh? it written? In like 88? 60s. 69, oh, 70. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Moore's Law, Law Wiki. Nineteen sixty five paper doubling every year. Wow. Crazy. Yeah, I've heard Let's see if this working. is two thousand eleven <laughs> up here. <clears throat> Intel dual core, quad core, core I seven right there. Oh, so <clears throat> it does account for like multi core processing. Yeah, so that's part of how they're getting the processing speed to continue going. It's multiple okay. cores. So that's uh, you know, the CPU and the clock speed. And then you know, it tells us RAM right off the top. right? Like Those are like some of the most important things you want to look at um, when you're purchasing a computer. So you know, the more RAM, the better. The faster the clock speed, the better. The more expensive the computer, usually the better. <laughs> Anybody have any questions about buying a computer and what else you might look at? Like, you know, graphics and videos, so having some graphics memory. So that's just like some more memory uh, dedicated just to processing graphics. And that's going to help your computer be awesome. And then they, you could even get a graphics processor, right, a GPU, graphics processor unit. So it's a, like a CPU, right, but it's only for handling graphics. So if you're a gamer, you might have that. I don't know if the NVIDIA GeForce has a GPU on it, but it comes with two gigabytes of memory. Are they designing them to last? Because like in the beginning when you have the motherboard, you have that battery on it that would eventually die out and you have to change the battery or whatever. Like, and then after a while... On, the, made, G, on the graphics like the, card? Yeah, the, or the, just the BIOS. On this, oh, on BIOS. Yeah, I think <clears throat> BIOS is no longer battery right. driven. So, I mean, they've, they've done away with that, but like, are they making computers that will last or are they making the stuff to fall apart? No, yeah, they, they, you should replace your computer every three to five years. <laughs> three to four five. years. Every three to four years. I was like eight years old now. It's too old. Yeah. All right, so a bit of a rambly uh, beginning, but it's chapter six. That's what we're looking at, hardware RAM. We've already covered all that. Uh, next week we look at networks, but I thought I'd show you guys networks. So we're just going to learn a little bit of information about networks. Sound good? Uh, so the benefits of a network. There's two benefits to networks. They allow us to share resources. Uh, information resources, let me put it this way, they allow us to share information, they allow us to share resources. Right? It's all about sharing networks. 
And so, you know, the network, which is the internet and the World Wide Web, allows us to share sometimes too much, <laughs> right? But, you know, sharing information. Hey, I'm at Costco, everybody. I'm eating pizza. Here's a picture of me, right? Facebook. Okay, so share information. Or they allow me to email you over the network. I'm sharing information. Or they allow me to send you a document, right? Here's my word paper. I'm sharing information. So a network enables that sharing. <clears throat> Back in the day, computers weren't connected. They were not connected together. They were not. They were not. Computers were not connected back in the day. They were like things which just stood and ran on their own. And if you wanted them to do something else, you had to go like to the store and buy disks, floppy disks, and stick them in your computer and load some new software on. Because your computer is connected to nothing. It's just a, like it's your fridge. <laughs> You know, you plugged it in, and that was it. If you wanted something to be in it, you'd have to go to the store and buy it and put it in it. You know, you couldn't download the stuff. In the 90s, I worked in a print shop, and the architects would draw their blueprints and tell their computer to print to a file. And then I'd bring the file in DOS over and send it to my printer port in DOS. And then my printer at a shop miles away would do it. But the network was walking it on a floppy. Yeah. Like they call that the sneaker net. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> you take the data and you walk it somewhere. So sharing information is one of the benefits of a network. The other benefit of a network is to share physical resources. So in here we have two printers. You guys could all print to those two printers. So we're sharing physical resources. And they, the way you're able to do that is because you're all connected to those, those two printers. If we didn't have a network, we'd need a printer for every computer. That would be expensive. So a network is nothing more than two or more devices connected together. That's all it is. Two or more devices connected together. That's a network. All right. So these are just like the basic fundamentals. What a network is, two or more devices connected together, the benefits, share information, share resources. And, and, uh, and the way that we, uh, and here's a picture of a network, the way we create a network is we just connect things together. That's it. All we have to do is figure out how to connect things together. All right. And so the first step in creating a network is think about how we can connect things. And we could connect things either with a wire or we could do it wirelessly. So if we're going to do it with a wire, we could use a twisted pair cable, a coaxial cable, a fiber optic cable. These are some of the most common choices. Okay? Uh, twisted pair and coaxial send electricity, electrical impulses, electrons fly, flowing down those wires. And fiber optic sends light. Fiber optic sends light. Whoa. That's cool. Sends light. No? <laughs> and uh, so in your house, you're going to have twisted pair probably. That's like Ethernet. That's this blue, these blue cables that you see on the back of your computers right here. That's Ethernet. Go ahead and unplug that cable from the back of your computer. And look at it. What's that look like? That little jack. Looks like a big old fat phone jack, right? That's called an RJ45 if you should so care. And uh, your phone is, called, is an RJ13, right? So it's just like a phone jack. And actually, your phone uses twisted pair wiring, too. And it's just pairs of wires twisted together. You, with the phone, uses a slightly smaller twisted pair, right? Fewer twisted pairs in it. But, uh, you know, Ethernet is, is that stuff right there. And it's just a phone thing, right? You just plug it in. So uh, that's what you have in your house, probably. Or like a network, a building, we use that. Coaxial is like your cable company, right? So that's what, you know, data, movies, whatever, your internet, if you're using Comcast, right? You're getting it through your coaxial that's coming to your house. And then fiber optic is, uh, is you know, um, since impulse, impulses of light, pulses of light. And so that is, uh, that's used for going all over the world. <coughs> Which one's the best? Obviously the fiber optic, right? Fiber optic is fastest. How about between but, the, uh, um, yeah. So here's a map, world map of fiber optic cables. So these are fiber optic cables around the world. The image, is it bigger? I want it bigger. That's big enough. I'll just make it bigger. I have the power. Check that out. Like, people have laid cables under the ocean. Like, let's take a cable, and we'll get a boat, and we'll just go on the boat, and we'll just, like, dole the cable out, and it'll sink to the bottom, we'll put weights on it, and we'll connect it over on the other side. All right? Like, whoa. 
And you know how long it takes to like send something from, you know, here to like, I don't know, here, right? Faster than that. Because it's moving at the speed of light. Whoa. It's moving at the speed of light. What's the speed of light? Speed of light. There's the speed of light. Meters a second. All right? And uh, so let's say uh, miles, meters in mile. Seven miles. Meters in mile. So uh, there's 16 uh, meters in a mile, whatever. So let's say, you know, there's about 33,000 miles around the world. So there's that many meters around the world. So if we take the speed of light, let me think about the two miles. So I, I want to I go uh, this way. And here, so does this mean meters around the world? And light travels at that many meters a second. So if uh, I wanted to go 100 miles, drive 100 miles, I'm driving 60 miles an hour, how long is it going to take me? No, if I want to drive 90 miles, let's do it that, 90 miles, and I'm going 60 miles an hour, how long is it going to take me? An hour and a half. How do you figure that out? What was the math? 90 divided, by 90 divided by 60, right? Yeah. So cool. So if I'm going 90 miles and I'm going 60 miles an hour, if I want to go 90 miles, I'm going 60 miles an hour, it's 90 divided by 60. Or if I want to go all these miles and I'm going at this speed, right? How long is it going to take me? It's going to take me 0.17 of a second to go all the way around the world with fiber optic cable. Whoa. That's fast. Like, faster than I click the mouse button, it's already gone around the world and it's back. Whoa. Because it's going at the speed of light. Now, the truth of that is it might be more like, I don't know, a second or half a second or a third of a second. Because of all the jumps. Because there's a little bit of a switch or something somewhere. It takes a second. Yeah. But that's, that's like blazing, mind-boggling. But that's why you could talk to somebody over the Internet and they're on anywhere in the world and there's no delay. It's real time. It's like, hey, what's up? Nothing. What's up with you? Right? Old school, when we had to talk to people, you know, far away around the world, there was like, you had to build in this pause. It'd be like, hey, how are you doing? Oh, I'm good. Thanks. You? Yeah, I'm doing well, too. There'd be like this weird pause, whereas like the signal was going and then coming back. So that's fiber optic. Sound effects. <coughs> er, er, er. So, twisted pair, coaxial, fiber optic, the different cables that's out there. You can make your own uh, Ethernet cables if you want. And you just get a crimper at Lowe's and you buy the cable in a box, like 20 bucks for a thousand feet or something or a hundred bucks for a thousand feet and you just cut out however many cable how much cable you need and you get your little rj45s and you put the wires on and you take your crimper and you squeeze it together and you got your ethernet cable so you make cable just like that and uh, you'd have to need an ethernet cable diagram you need this heel here because you un uncoil those cables right and uh and then you have to lay uh, lay out the wires in a certain way, and you know there's the wires all have a coloring scheme. So this is it right here, and uh, and you put them in to the little RJ45 like in this order, and then you crimp it closed. You make your own little cables. You don't have to wait for somebody else. You just make them yourself. So that's connecting thing with wires. You could also connect wirelessly. Don't have to go up in the attic when you do this. And that's what that looks like. It's just a router, wireless router. Okay. Uh, so that's what that is. I was wondering. And uh, you know, sometimes there's a difference between a, a router, uh, a modem, and you know, router and a modem. And we'll learn about that here in a second. I was going to show you, but oh well. So it connect wirelessly, and there's all kinds of wireless connections. So Wi-Fi, 802.11 is the internet standard 802.11 something like that 
And uh, and there's like 802.11g and 802.11n. Who's looking at their phone right now? Just raise your hand. Is it you? And you? And you? All right, all three of you stand up, junkies. Go first. Hi, my name is, and I'm addicted to technology. I'm addicted to technology. There's a lot of us here who are addicted to technology. Welcome. We're glad you're here. We're hoping we could help you get a control on your addiction a little bit. Because when we're in lecture, we don't do any technology. We just listen to me drone. What's your name? You're next. You can sit down, Maham. My name is Nasser. I'm addicted to technology. Oh, yeah, man. Me too. I'm addicted too. Sometimes I'm driving and I just can't even like, I'm like, I got to like start dialing while I'm driving. And I'm like, I'm such an addict. I shouldn't be doing this. All right. Thank you. Sit down. What's your name? And? Oh, man. It's hard, isn't it? I know. You're in the right place, brother. We'll help you out. Just keep coming. <clears throat> All right. So we got Wi Fi, right? 802.11g and whatever. There's just different iterations. 802.11n, A, C, G, and I don't know which one's the most current. It's whichever charges you the most when you go to the store. Right? That's the most current one. So those are just like, a, you know, different versions of it. And then there's also Bluetooth. So you guys know the difference between Wi-Fi and Bluetooth? How many people know the difference? All right, so Bluetooth is just like shorter range between devices. Like my phone to my car, I'm going to use Bluetooth. Wi-Fi is like a bigger range and, you know, uh, not, not so personal. You know, Bluetooth is my phone to my car. You know, it's not going to be like many people's phones to my, well, it could be actually, but. So, yeah, Bluetooth is shorter distance. And uh, Wi-Fi is longer distance. Would, it, would Bluetooth have uh, less of a band for less carriers, too? Like, as far as, like, Wi-Fi, you can have multiple users, obviously. I mean, like, you were almost saying that Bluetooth is more exclusive, but it's not. Yeah, no, it's not. I just think about it more personally, because yeah. it's just my and device is connecting smaller, together. Like, band on it, maybe, or? I don't, I, I don't so know. So support multiple users, too. I don't know if you could do some sort of thing. Probably. You could do anything. Just got to read about it, learn more about it. Definitely. Yeah. I don't have the best answer to that question. It's definitely shorter distance, though. Yeah, shorter mm -hmm. distance. So next thing you should know about uh, networks is you connect things with cables or wirelessly, and then the next thing we'll think about is the bandwidth, the throughput. Like how much data can be transferred over whatever medium we chose, whether it's wired or wireless. And so that's bandwidth, throughput. And you can measure... Measure bandwidth, right? You could do a, a bandwidth speed test, test, speed test, right? And so uh, I don't know how accurate these are, but you know it'll it'll like tell me how fast am I sending data and how fast am I receiving data, and so it's just like testing stuff. Some pretty cool graphics. So now it's you know sending out a ping or something, or it's doing nothing. It's actually Go ahead, start. Start. Whatever. Oh, oh, just right when it started. That was awful. Now I gotta go through this all again. Go. Go. I'll pause this video till it starts. There we go. So then now it's like, you know, I got download speed of 177 megabits per second. And uh, upload speed of 113 megabits per second. So that's megabits, not megabytes, which is weird in networking. It's a lowercase b, right? And so it's not divided by a factor of 8 or multiplied by a factor of 8, right? It's just the zeros and ones. So one, 177 million zeros and ones per second. Well, that's pretty impressive, actually, <laughs> right? 113 million zeros and ones. That's pretty impressive. Like, how long would it take me to transmit 113 million zeros and ones to each of you using the medium of voice? It's going to be a while. Zero, one, one, zero, one, 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 zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. And you've already lost track. Like, not a good transmission. Bandwidth throughput. How many people have learned nothing yet today? Let me see your hands. I'm just I'm curious. I'm serious. How many people have learned nothing today? So far, you already knew all this. All right, good. So everybody's learned something? Yeah. Sweet. So the next thing we think about when we build a network is topology. 
And that's basically how we're going to lay everything out. So you could do it in a bus, like you could have one line connecting everything, and then computers are connected to that one line, or you could have a ring, or you could have a star. And star is the most common topology today. So everything just connects to a central location, right? And, uh, and then we also have architecture. So we have, you know, topology, we have architecture. And architecture is a client server or peer to peer. So here's a client server, right? We have clients and they're all connected to a router. And then the router is connected to the server. And so any, all the clients make requests, say, hey, I want to see this web page. And they go to the server, and the server then goes and gets the web page, the network server, and brings it back. You'll hear server talked about a lot with computers. And there's like all kinds of different servers. They're all servers, but like, you know, I have a network server here which manages this network. And then that network server connects to servers on the internet, right? And those servers do something and bring things back. But when this computer in the classroom wants to talk to the internet, I go through the network server and tell the network server, hey, I want to talk to the internet or get something from the internet. And it goes and gets it and brings it back to me. Or I want to print something. It doesn't go straight to the printer. It goes to the server and then from the server to the printer. I think I have like 87% certainty on that answer. So maybe it does go straight to the printer. But so we have a topology. How do we lay it out? We have architecture, client server. So you can think about client server kind of like a restaurant, right? You go in, you're a client at the restaurant, you have a server or a waiter. The server comes over, says, Can I get you something? You say, Yeah, I want fries and a big old bottle of Jack Daniels. And the waiter goes and gets you your fries, just exactly like what you order, right? And your big ball of Jack Daniels comes back, and you say, thank you very much. And you do some eating and drinking, and then, you know, anytime you want some more, you tell the server, and the server goes and gets it, and brings it back, and gives it to you. That's client server. Peer-to-peer -peer is like BitTorrent, you know, where two computers are connecting, and uh, or like Napster back in the day, right? It's just like... Your computer is both a client and a server. Sometimes I'm asking for things from other computers, and sometimes other computers are asking for things of me, mine, and I'm serving it to them. Right? So that's peer to peer. Is LimeWire like that? I don't know. I don't think it is. Do you have a LimeWire? Yeah, I think that was another, like, I could get movies and MP3s for free sites, right? Yeah. So then we have protocols. So when we talk about networks, we got to connect the devices, wired or wirelessly. And then we say, hey, how are they going to be laid out? Topology and star is the most common. And then we say, what's the architecture going to be? And we say, okay, it's going to be client server. And then we say, uh, what's, what, are, what are the protocols? And so different networks have different protocols. So this up here, HTTPS, what's that stand for? Oh, hypertext terminal protocol. Hypertext transfer protocol. Oh, there we go. Right? And uh, so that's the protocol of transferring hypertext. And hyper, hy web pages is uh, HTML, hypertext markup language, right? That's web pages. And you could do network OSI, right? And, uh, and so here is like, whoa, I don't want just that one. I don't know, seven layers of OSI, application, presentation, session, transport, uh, network, data, physical layer. Right, so the physical layer, like these are all the cables down here, right? And then here we have session layer, HTTP would be like right here, hypertext transfer protocol. Beneath that is TCP, transmission control protocol, right? The transport layer. And so sometimes you'll hear about that. But the main thing you want to take away is just like, not that you have to remember that there's these different layers that people think about when they're putting together networks. But what we're, what we're learning right now is that there's this thing called protocols. And protocols are nothing more than, like, how, how have you heard the word protocol used before? A set of rules. A set of rules, right? Like, you know, the military's got protocols, ways of doing things, right? So if we look up what, you know, protocol is the official procedure or system of rules governing, that is a great definition, governing affairs of state or diplomatic occasions, right? So it's just a way to do something. And so when we talk about network protocols, we're talking about rules of communication. And why is it important for us to have rules of communication with computers? It's the same way it's important for us to have rules of communication as humans, right? So I'm following a very tried and tested protocol for communicating with a room full of people, right? Like, I talk, you guys listen. <laughs> I face you. I face you when I'm talking, right? And uh, 
I don't talk too fast. I try to modulate my voice. You know, when you have a question, I shut up and you talk and I listen. And then when I answer, you stop talking and you listen. Right? One person talks at a time. If there's a collision, if two people start to talk at the same time and there's a collision, then uh, you know we we have ways to resolve that. Oh, oh, sorry. No, you go ahead. No, no. Uh, oh, okay. No. All right. No, go ahead. All right. Cool. All right. We resolve the collision. So those are rules of communication. So networks have rules of communication. If I violated the rules of communication, you'd instantly be like, "What is he doing?" Right? Like I'm no longer following our rules of communication. Like this is just weird to lecture from. I'm a little bit afraid of seeing you guys. I'm nervous about teaching a class. I'm going to hide behind the screen. Right? Like I'm violating the rules of communication. You're like, and sometimes you meet people like that who just totally violate the rules of communication, and you're like, what is up? Right? Like that person doesn't know how to communicate. They don't know the communication protocols. Anybody ever like traveled abroad? <laughs> right? Like they have different communication protocols. You know, and I don't know if I want to demonstrate this with anybody or who I'd even choose, but it's like, you know, uh, right? It's like sometimes like you go to foreign countries and, and like, I don't know, like so, Andre, get up, dude. Hey, Andre, so good to see you. How are you? It's good to see you, my friend. You know, it's like, whoa, you're a little too close, man. Thank you, Andre. Right? It's, you know, they do that in foreign countries. You know, you're just like, okay, take a step back. Take a step back. You know, you're too much. Because American's personal space is about arm's length. But in Italy, it's about here. I have to kiss you know? I just hate it. Some dude comes up and kisses you on the cheek or something. Yeah, but that's just the American protocol. I need that. <laughs> What, who would you be if you were uh, stolen from the hospital by Arab sheiks and raised in Saudi Arabia as an oil prince? You have a completely different perspective on yeah. the world. They hold hands over there. The dudes go around holding hands. Yeah, they go around holding hands. <laughs> yeah, I, I traveled to Indonesia and I thought, man, there's a bunch of gay guys in Indonesia. It's like, no, the, the dudes just hang out like, you know, friends. They'll be hanging out holding hands. I thought it was just like, wow, this is a really gay town. It's like oh. San Francisco of <laughs> Indonesia. <laughs> <clears throat> That's okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but I was misinterpreting the protocols. <laughs> Rules of communication. So this is just talking about, hey, we have ways we communicate, and if there's a collision, how do we resolve that? So then we have modems and routers. And uh, so here's kind of how that diagram would lay out. You have the internet, and then you have a modem, and you have a router. And, uh, and so the internet, and then a modem, and then a router. I just said that. So what's the difference between those? So let's look at what a modem does first. So modem stands for modulate, demodulate. That's where we get the word modem. So what's being modulated and what's being demodulated? What do you think about when you hear the word modulate? What's modulate? Maybe adjust a frequency or something. Let's look, look it up. Extra modifying or controlling influence, very strength, vary the strength, tone, or pitch of one's voice. That's what I think about when I think about modulate. Could I send you zeros? Let me let me step back a second. Uh, so computers store zeros and ones as electrical impulses. Phone lines carry <clears throat> sounds. That's the way you know the phone network is built is to carry sound, right? So how do we take electrical impulses on and off? and send that over a phone, we have to modulate those on-offs into a sound, send those sounds over the phone wire, and then when those sounds come to the place they want to be received, we have to demodulate them from sound back to electrical impulses. Right? And so that's why, like in the old days of dial-up modems, anybody ever have a dial-up modem and you heard it and it would make this noise, you ready? I'm going to turn away from my computer so I don't <laughs> spit on it. It'd go... <laughs> And you'd hear this weird thing like a dying mouse or something <laughs> being electrocuted. And that was like zeros and ones. It was like, ee, 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 ee. you know, high is zero, low, one is low or something. And you're modulating zeros and ones into sounds and sending them over a wire. And then you demodulate it back from sound. So not all modems do that with sound, but that's the, the main idea that modems work, right? Is you modulate, demodulate, and that's where the phrase comes from is you're taking the signal over the wire and you're just translating it back into the way it could be worked with in the computer. And that's actually what happens a lot with programming is 
you just have to find different ways to send things or store things or work with things and you're sort of like this needs it in that format but then once it comes back here I have to take it from that format and put it into this other format so that's what a modem does so here you can see that picture a modem right so you got a signal coming in and gets demodulated or you have a signal going out it gets modulated and then you have a router and a router just routes the traffic to different computers and so uh, you know the, here's the evolution hub switches and routers and that's just like sort of the sophistication from left to right. And there's nuances between those, but basically a router routes traffic. That's all you got to think is a router routes traffic. And you can see that here, right? So access to the internet's being routed to each of those computers. Or if I had a message for just one computer, it'd get routed just to that number three computer or whatever. You know, so the router's taking care of that. So here's what a router, wireless router. You could plug in Ethernet cables in the back. There's the RJ45 ports, right? And that's like a really big router, like up in our office. That, that's about the size of the router for this building. And you have all those blue cables coming in. From each one of these computers, that one, each cable goes up and plugs into that. And then the server, right, is using the router connects everything, and then the server is sort of managing everything. So uh, we could categorize uh, networks by size. A PAN is a personal area network, a LAN is a local area network, and a WAN is a wide area network. Some people even talk about MANs, metropolitan area networks. So that's just categorized by size. Personal area network would be like my phone and my car. A local area network would be like City College. A wide area network would be like City College, Reedley College, Ochre Center, Madera Center. We're all connected, right, but it's a wide area network. Uh, home networking. So if you want to secure your wireless router at home, you could go through a few steps to do that. You could change something called the SSID. First thing you want to do is log into the admin <coughs> panel. So you just look on your, your uh, wireless router. So if I had this one, I'd say link this admin panel, right? And uh, maybe I'd put in the model number. But, and then it'd say this is how you get to the admin panel. And I'd go to the admin panel and then I'd find something called SSID. And I change that, and that's basically what gets broadcast, right? The identification. So you know that's the thing when you see like uh, funny, <coughs> funny SSID names. Oh, uh, right. Yeah, security van or surveillance van number two. Yeah. So people do funny SSIDs sometimes. Uh, oh no, internet access. It's work. better if we see the pictures. Dun dun dun. Uh, blurring. No free internet for you. <laughs> yeah. Right, that's the SSID. Very funny. How do I get that lock? <laughs> Dude, just call Geek Squad. Uh, we can hear you having sex. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that was, I'm not going to say that one out loud. Uh, here's one. FBI surveillance van. Yep. North <coughs> Green Wi-Fi is best Wi-Fi. <laughs> NSA listening post. I don't know where that neighborhood is. They got a lot of interesting ones right in their neighborhood. Chuck Norris wet. Pretty fly for a Wi-Fi. Damn, I'm out of beer. So those are your SSIDs. <clears throat> And that's what you want to do is change your SSID from the default Linksys or whatever the default is because that default just says you haven't done anything. Change your admin password and you want to enable encryption, whatever the options are. Um, so when I made this slide, WPEA2, I don't know what the current one is, if that's still current. You want to then disable your SSID broadcast so people won't even know that your wireless router's there. You will once you've connected all your devices, but then disable the broadcast, and it's no longer going to be sitting there saying, this is the name of the network that's available, right? And then you could enable MAC address authentication. So every network card has a unique identifier, and uh, that's called the MAC address or the local address, and you could go into the terminal, and uh, I don't know if this works on MAC. This might be... Uh, IP config all. I think that's a Windows command. I don't know what the equivalent is on Mac. Oops, that's not what I wanted. IP config 
all Mac. IP config Mac OS manual page developer. What's the Mac equivalent, please? Moving at the speed of mud. IP config. And typing it wrong. Usage IP config. Uh, help. I haven't done this on a Mac. I'll stop wasting your time. config get if address IP config as V I need to go back and take a terminal class all right so anyhow if you do it on uh, Windows this is what it looks like you type that in. You can see up here I've typed in IP config all on Windows. IP config all. And then it shows me a bunch of stuff about my uh, IP is internet protocol, right? And, and it shows me physical address. So that's my MAC address for this Ethernet, and that's Ethernet cable adapter, right? And so uh, here's my physical address. You can see that. That one's for Bluetooth. This one's Broadcom or whatever. So I'm really looking for the bottom physical address there. And I get that, that physical address. There's my IP address. Uh, and, uh, and then I, I get that physical address, and then I set that as the MAC address for this thing right here for MAC address authentication. And so then it knows, hey, only computers that have this list, I'll have a list of like, it's basically saying like, hey, here's my garage, and you can only park here if you have one of these 10 license plates. Right? And so if some car comes up and it doesn't have that license plate, you can't park here. So if some computer tries to connect to my wireless router and it doesn't have the MAC address in my list of acceptable computers that can connect, you can't connect here. So it's just one more layer of security. All right. Last thing I have here, you can just look at this on your own. I'm just kind of curious. Hey, our cell phone's bad. There's just a little bit of information out there like Wikipedia, mobile phone, radiation and health, uh, wireless electronic devices and health. ABC News did something in 2011. You could Google it, or Larry King did a talk show on it, you know. And um, and so it's uh, you know just something to maybe think about. Like uh, you don't want to sleep with your head on your cell phone. Cell phone, you know, when you look at the manual that comes with your phone, it usually says keep it an inch from your head, right? So use it on speakerphone or use it in your car. I don't know. Don't let your kids use it. But that's just a little something to put on your um, your radar. You can check that out on your own. I don't, uh, I don't know. I don't try to, you know, sometimes I, I try not to hold the phone next to my head. Anybody ever like talked on the phone for a really long time and your head's warm? Anybody had that experience? You're like, dude, my head is warm. It actually heats your head up. Cell phone, head warm. <laughs> and maybe there's an image. Yeah, you, know, you know, they've done like whatever. Kind of like infrared yeah, infrared or something. Feels good in the winter. <laughs> good in the winter. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Giant cats underwater coming to eat you. All right, uh, that's networks. Anybody have any questions? Introduction to networks. Okay. Uh, anybody want to hear me babble on about anything else? Seems like there's a cool video I want to show you about networks. Let's find it. There's operating systems, there's application software, there's networks, and uh, it's 
creating Ethernet cables, uh, dangers of texting and driving, behind the great firewall of China, four principles, driverless car, welcome to the age of the industrial internet. That's not it. Adventures, Larry Page. Um, TED Talk Network. Let's just, wow, there's 47 things to look through. Let's try this. TED Talk. Uh, what is the internet? Discover the physical side of the internet. What is the internet really? I think that might be it. So I can't show this online, so I just want to make sure my volume's off. But I just want to make sure I point you to the right one. And a commercial, of course. 